Well, AMD might have made history today by launching the worst product of all time in the graphics card space. At least, uh, well, I mean, there's really not a lot to say about it other than that. Um, other than, rather than just rant about why this is the worst thing ever, let's also acknowledge the fact that we are in the worst graphics card market ever. And so are there still any people who might be in a position where buying this graphics card is a good deal or at least a reasonable thing to do? So that's how I'm going to approach this. We, we know this is bad. You can look up all the tech reviewers who basically, you know, all confirm that this is a stupid product. Now, the, the shame is that I, I just don't feel like it had to be, but that's beside the point. Now, um, just in case you somehow missed it, the, the main issues with this card are, are two things that combine to make it one of the worst things ever. Number one is that it only has four gigabytes of memory, which in this day and age isn't really enough. However, that by itself wouldn't be the absolute deal breaker. In fact, it could be a small advantage in the fact that that makes it terrible for crypto mining, which might help control its prices on the actual uh, on the actual retail market, because MSRPs tend to be meaningless. Um, and, and GPU prices are actually driven by their crypto mining value for the most part. Anyway, the problem is that we combine it with the fact that you only get PCIe uh, four, a uh, Gen 4 by four lanes, which again also isn't the end of the world, except on a PCIe Gen 3 system, you also only get four lanes, and it absolutely cripples the card's performance anytime you're running over the four gigabyte VRAM limit, because a lot of other four gigabyte cards still end up performing okay, and even this card ends up still performing okay when you're on the PCI Gen 4 uh, motherboard. So basically, Basically, when I'm looking at approaching this from the, uh, well, I mean, from the design perspective, I, I guess there must be some cost reason why they did that, but it, those two things together cripple the thing. If it had a eight gigabytes of VRAM, then the uh, slow connector would be less of a big deal because you're not running over the VRAM capacity. And if you're going to have only four gigabytes of VRAM, then you need to have a quick, com quick connection to the system memory when that spills over, but, but they also crippled that. Other things they crippled that you may or may not care about is video encoding and even decoding with the AV1. Um, and then, you know, it only has these two monitor outputs. So there's a lot of other things about this card that are absolutely crippled. Okay. Anyway, with that in mind, I'm trying to approach this from the perspective of who, who might want to buy this. Well, if you're on an old system with a PCI Gen 3 motherboard, uh, then, then just don't. And if you're not sure if you have one, um, well, look up what motherboard you have and you should be able to find out um, what uh, PCI generation that is. So just don't consider it. Now, wh what am I saying? Can I back up this information? I didn't get a review sample. So if you thought this was me doing my own benchmarks, no, I don't, I'm, I don't get sent review samples. However, let me get out of the way here. Um, Hardware Unboxed, I think, did the most thorough and just unbelievably good uh, review of this. Um, so if we take a look at their results, you can see the issue here is that at the uh, PCIe Gen 4 performance, uh, you're basically performing uh, very, very close to a 1650 Super. Okay, so you're really close to 1650 Super. You're fairly close to the 5500 XT 4 gigabyte model. Although notice you're actually still doing slightly worse than that, although kind of within the margin of error. So from generation to generation, comparing the four gigabyte models, we didn't see any improvement. But when you look at the PCIe 3.0 connection, we see that the performance absolutely plummets. And one of the worst things about it is that the one, the um, the minimum frame rates drop. And when you're actually playing a game, seeing those stutters down to the low minimums is, is horrible. And then this now makes you worse than an RX 570 and um, only basically tying a 1650, although with worse uh, lows on, on the performance there. So uh, in other words, on a PCIe 3.0 connection, you might as well buy, look for one of these cheaper cards on the used market, and there's no real reason at all to consider this card, especially when those other cards still have the video encoding and probably more monitor outputs and all of that. So again, who might want to consider this? Well, if you happen to be on a PCIe 4.0 platform or you're planning a build uh, that's going to be on one of them, uh, then this could still make sense. Although if you're upgrading from a previous GPU, 
make sure this is actually an upgrade because again, you need to see where this falls. So let's pull up a performance chart here. Um, I like the one over at Tech Power Up. Now this one hasn't been updated to actually have this GPU on it yet. Um, but let me uh, zoom in so we can actually uh, see this a little bit better here. Um, but the performance of, of this GPU is very, very close to like the RX 580 and we saw like the 1650 Super, right? So, so we're kind of in this ballpark, okay? So if your GPU is already like a GTX 1060, you, you might see an extremely small performance gain, but you're also losing some, uh, you know, if you're on the six gigabyte version, you're losing some VRAM capacity, video encoding, it makes absolutely no sense. You'd have to be pretty far down this list for this to maybe be an upgrade. It's, it's, it's only a small upgrade over the 1650, so with other drawbacks, I don't think it makes sense. Um, if you're down on like a 1050 Ti, then like, Maybe, I mean, it would be a noticeable upgrade as long as you don't care about any of those other features that you're losing access to. So if you're way down on like an actual 1050, a, 60, a 660 Ti, a GTX 950, RX 460, if you're way down here, the performance jump might be enough to where this card would be a solid upgrade, again, as long as you don't need any of those video encoding features that you're losing out on, which will, I mean, I guess a lot of people might not need or care about. Again, monitor connections, only two outputs. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of big downsides here to think about. But anyway, um, so then why do we run into the real problem? Well, uh, so, so, okay. <laughs> Then you need to look at what else could you buy for the money. So for one thing, let's look up, what does this card actually cost? So every single model of it on Newegg right now is already sold out. Um, now I expected that, but let's look at, first of all, there were actually some models available for the 199.99 MSRP. So some of these cards did actually exist. Now, there were quite a few models of them, but then we jump up to some models priced at more like $300 and some kind of splitting the difference here, like this one at 269, 279, and we see 299. So what I expect to see now as these restock is that the $200 models, we don't see as many of those as long as manufacturers are actually able to sell the more expensive models. So I think the models that we will see more stock available for are more like at, gonna be at least this 269, 279, you know, and 299. So we're gonna be more like in that 250 to $300 range for the ones that come in stock. And we honestly still don't know if they're gonna stay in stock at those prices. So what you need to do now is compare, okay, what else could we get at this price point? So remember when we looked at our um, performance chart, right? we saw what what graphics cards this performs similarly to. So if I go on eBay right now, a 1650 Super delivers slightly better, almost even performance to this graphics card, right? For, for, to the 6500 XT. Um, but the 1650 Super is going to have all of those video encoding features and it's still gonna give its full performance on a PCI Gen 3 system. And you can find these at a buy it now price used on eBay for about 300 bucks, which is going to just be a flat out better graphics card if you don't mind buying used off of eBay uh, than the $300 uh, versions of that. So if you could get this card for 200 bucks, I'm not sure you can actually get a much better GPU for 200 bucks if you uh, used, if, Again, you're on the PCIe Gen 4 platform, okay? So if you could actually get the $200 version of this for $200, it might make sense. The, the versions, like, I don't know what idiots are buying these. Maybe they're trying to scalp them, but these did go out of stock at $300, and at that price, this is just stupid. It's just really stupid. Um, an RX 580, for example, is also going to have similar performance um, but none of the drawbacks. And we're seeing these going for like $260. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying to search by buy it now prices. So there are used buy it now prices on eBay. Again, you have to deal with eBay um, for that, right? And I'm gonna be shocked if we see 
um, many of these $200 MSRP models, right? I think that, that more of the models that we see are gonna be more like this 299, 269, uh, 279, okay? So if that's the world that we're actually living in, then literally no one should buy these unless you're allergic to buying a used thing on eBay, okay? <laughs> Now, if you are allergic to buying something used on eBay, then you do have to step up in price. But I was looking for something that's actually in stock right now on Newegg. Now, these aren't always in stock at this price, but they come in stock at this price very, very regularly. So this is the RX 6600 which you can get for $460. Now, granted, that's a big step up, but like I said, I'm assuming these two, if these models are actually available at $200, in this current market, this might not be the stupidest thing if you're on Gen 4 and you don't need any of the video encoding stuff. Okay, that's the only case where I think this makes sense. Okay, if the models are actually in stock are more like $300, I would argue that you should honestly just save up an extra 150 bucks and buy the RX 6600 if you're allergic to the used market and you have to buy a new GPU. Um, that's in stock at this price, which this one currently is. Now, performance-wise, notice that this actually was included in Hardware Unbox Test. The RX 6600 is doubling, very nearly at least, doubling the performance of the 6500 XT, right? And it's more than doubling the price compared to the $200, but again, if I'm correct that the models we actually see in stock are gonna be um, closer to $300 range, right? If that's the case, then again, saving up a bit more money here for this uh, an extra 150 bucks, you're not doubling that cost. You're not doubling the cost of the $300 model, but you are doubling the performance and you're also not gonna have as big of a downside. Now, some of you might argue, well, the 6600 also has a cut down um, uh, PCIe connection, but it's times eight, not times four. And so it very rarely causes uh, as significant of a problem as the, um, as the times four connection on this 6500 XT. So I think you, you don't need to be as worried about whether you have the gen four connection when you're getting the RX 6600. There are a few cases where if you, especially if you pass your eight gigabyte VRAM limit, but again, you have eight gigabytes of VRAM, so that won't be such a big deal. Um, so in other words, it's, it's less to worry about. You're gonna have all of the encoding features, um, more monitor output connections, um, just, just none of those problems. So, yeah, I, I guess I should conclude this and basically just say, looking at what's in stock right now, if you wanna buy a new GPU, I recommend just spending more money and getting at least an RX 6600 or just don't buy anything right now. If you're willing to go used, I think the 1650 Super and the RX 580 are much uh, better options if you're willing to buy used than buying the 299, 269 or 279 version of this. If you happen to be on a PCIe 4.0 connection and you just need a new GPU and you found one of these in stock at 200 bucks in the current market, that might kind of make sense a, li a little bit. We'll see if they're ever actually in stock for that price. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section. Have an excellent day.